Hi and welcome to episode 10 of my series where I share a list of five favorites. Today's a little different though. Today is my first five interfaces. My very first audio interface back in the early 90s was the Creative Technologies MIDI Blaster, MB10. I used it with an Atari 1040 ST, of which I'd love to buy another one actually. Running Cubase 1.5, it was virtually a MIDI sound module with about 300 instruments and sounds. Boasting 16 channels of MIDI and a huge 20 note polyphony with PCM 44.1 stereo output. This thing was awesome. Well, back then, I'm sure it was in my mind. That was my first look into the world of MIDI. So staying with creative technologies, because that's all I knew of back then, it was time to upgrade. I went down to Tandy Electronics, which was pre-Dick Smith back then, and purchased my first ADDA equipped sound card for my Windows PC. Hmm, I love that card. Okay, so after several creative cards and PC upgrades later, I was working at a local studio when I first saw Pro Tools. And here enters the DigiDesign M-Box Mini. With Focusrite preamps, inserts, and Spdiff I.O., I was in heaven. Now I could record guitar and vocals together, and even tried recording drums with two cheap overhead mics. That went well. Next was an interface that was given to me after my very first video shoot. I was assisting a friend of mine and was in charge of the sound equipment. The Presonus Fire Studio Mobile was bought for the project. This tiny portable interface packed quite a punch actually. Two great mic preamps, six line inputs, and adding two channels of SPDIF digital input, that's 10 inputs in total inside this solid metal box. My first look into Presonus proved to be everlasting. At number five, and at this stage I was still a Pro Tools user, I needed to upgrade my hardware once again. I needed to upgrade, and I needed at least four mic pre's to record my drums. It was time to play with the big boys, and that's when I went to the Digi003 control surface interface. I absolutely loved this thing. The faders, the knobs, the lights. Oh man. So that was my journey through audio interfaces. As I mentioned before, the Fire Studio Mobile did have a pretty big impact on me. After many thousands of dollars of upgrading Pro Tools, and remember the hardware had to be plugged in back then to make it all work, and all these damn keys. It was time to check out that Studio One disc that came with the Fire Studio Mobile, and basically I haven't looked back. So wow, what a journey. Let me know what audio interfaces you have owned and what you're using now. Please let me know in the comments below. And also, if you like what I'm doing here, please remember to like the video, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you can get notified of any new content I have coming up. I'll see you all next week when I share my five favorite bass players. See you then.